Welcome back, Pouring Nation. Today we're going to talk about flip cups. I'm going to do two paintings of two of the styles that I like best with flip cups. We are going to mix our own paints and we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of flip cups so that you get the best results possible going forward. So the paint that I'm going to use today, I have this acrylic titanium white, um, artist level artist loft permanent magenta, Liquitex Basics Cadmium Yellow and Simply Acrylic Dark Blue. And the palette that we're going to work on is this one. So first we're going to do a little palette work here just to figure out what color, what I need to make the colors that I want. And then we'll get to the pouring. So my camera credit out there, but this is the darker orange that I'm looking for. So we have these four colors, the uh, dark aqua, tealy looking, could be a little greener, but I'm fine with this. Kind of an, a burnt sienna type color and a mustard type color. And we're gonna use these in our pour. And again, I, I've mixed each of these together, I know what they're going to make. They're not going to make really ugly colors. Um, you probably want to go easy on this color because it's the one that's going to muddy up the rest of them the most. So let's get to that. So as you guys know, I like to measure everything. And so I'm making up my own colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up the colors and then I'm going to put the pouring medium in. This time I'm going to use my glue pouring medium, which is 70% glue, 30% water, and I'm going to do two parts pouring medium to one part paint, since all of these are kind of medium body paints. So I'm gonna make up the, the paint first, get my right colors, and then double, put two parts pouring medium once I'm there. How many of you guys, tell me in the no comments below, how many of you guys cut your paint can, your paint bottles open and grab every last drop that you can get out of them? I totally do that. Okay, so there are my colors. I think they look quite good together. Then we're gonna have a little bit of white too. All right, so I've mixed all of these up, these are too thick. When you're doing a flip cup pour, if your paints are too thick, you'll never get uh, any pretty colors mixing together. So this is slightly more than my regular mix. And if you haven't watched my video about uh, acrylic pour consistency, I will link that in the uh, bubble above and on my, I got a little doobie there. You see that? Definitely don't want that in there. And in the description below, so I'm gonna add a little water to each of these to get them. What we want is medium thin to thin. If it's too thick, again, you won't get your colors like you want. Um, so I'll probably go with medium thin on this one.
So one word to the wise, if you do mix your glue and water together, make sure you are shaking this or mixing this up before you use it. Glue and water will tend to separate and this is what it looks like. And I poured that into my first thing of paint and had to pour it out because obviously that won't work and I won't get the same consistency between my paints. Now I'm going to cover these uh, with a paper towel, a damp paper towel, leave them for about an hour. So hopefully I get rid of all of those bubbles. All right, my paints have sat for a couple of hours. Most of those bubbles are gone. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a stir to check my consistency again. Again, I'm just, just under regular consistency. So here, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna make two cups. One of them's gonna be a layered cup with some white on the bottom. One's gonna be a dirty pour, and on the dirty pour, I'm gonna put silicone, uh, maybe one drop per two ounces of silicone in on the dirty pour. The flip cup can be done a couple different ways. One way is to get a flat object, put it on, flip it, and then pull it off. Another way is just to lift up your canvas Put it on top. You want to hold right on the container or around the container so that when you turn it, it doesn't come off. But we're just going to flip. Again, flip cup. And some people just like to take their cup and quickly flip it. Some comes out, but most of it stays right there. The nice part about a flip cup is that the heavier paints, if we stack them at the bottom of the cup, when the flip cup turns over, those heavier paints are at the top and they will gradually work their way down. A lot of people use titanium white, which I'm gonna to do today. They will gradually fall through the other paint and kind of pick up undertones of that paint to help give like ribbons of color and different uh, effects. Same thing happens with the um, silicone, but in opposite. When I flip this over, the silicone at the bottom gradually moves its way up, and as it does, it's collecting pieces of different colors of paint. That's why I get those cells that have different hues of paint all the way, or different colors of paint all around them, or it looks like it has halos of paint in them. The other thing about a dirty pour, or a flip cup, is I like to fill the cup that I'm using. In this case, I'm going to use a five ounce cup. Really, I only need about four ounces for a uh, eight by 10 canvas, 98 square inches. If you include the sides, sorry, divide that by 25, that gives us four ounces. I'm going to use a little bit more and probably dump off a little bit. If you don't fill the cup, if I used a big cup like this and I just did four ounces, you know, a 16 ounce or a 12 ounce cup, and I just use four ounces, when I turn it, all of that paint is going to move so much that it's going to, it's going to mix way more. You'll get way more mud. The more the paint moves, the more muddy or um, mixed colors you're going to get. Also, if you use really thin paints, the more it's going to mix and the more muddy, not necessarily muddied because some colors mix together well, but the more mixed the colors are going to be. That's why I like to use um, medium thick, not medium thick, medium thin or regular consistency. So again, we're going to do one. Regular, just stacked. Do a flip cup with that. And the other one, we're going to do a dirty pour, which means I'm going to put some colors in and then drop the other colors so it kind of mixes in as it goes in. So first on this one, I want a little bit of white. And I think I want this dark. I'm just, I'm not pouring it in too, too thick because I want it to stay on one on top of the other. Fill that all the way up. And then like I said, I have maybe a half an ounce here. So I'm only going to put silicone or silicone. And I barely open my bottle, otherwise I always get too much. I just want one, one drop in there, one drop in there, one drop in there. That should be plenty. 
I don't like to use a lot of silicone because when you do, this is a painting I did the other day, but when you use a lot of silicone, you get these tons and tons and tons of, of cells. And also, which I'll show you later, see these big cells right here? And then they have little cells right here. That is part of when I torch a flip cup or anything with silicone. So it's got silicone, so I'm going to mix that up. So with this one also, I'm going to start out with the white. Because I'm doing a dirty pour here, I actually want to pour from really high up so it actually, rather than sits on the top like this side did, it, it goes down into the paint. See if I had done it way down here, it just sits on top. I don't want that. All right, so I'm going to show both methods. With this cup, I'm going to put my flat surface on, lift that up, flop it over, and this one I'm going to put it on and flip. Now with both of these, I want to give them a little bit of time to let the lighter colors and the silicone for that one to come up to the surface um, in this one and allow the heavier paint or the titanium white to kind of filter down through and see if we can't get some of those nice effects. Last thing on a flip cup, obviously you can pull the cup off any way you want. The cup actually makes a seal, so you have to give it a little force. You know, I'm actually lifting it up here. So you can do a uh, flip and drag, which is I flip it and I drag it to this side. You can do a straight up flip. If you flip it straight up, the paint on the edge of the cup here is going to come out on the sides and just kind of come down in a circle. So a lot of times you get kind of a circle looking thing. If you pull it like this into the side, it kind of makes an alluvial fan like you've seen when rivers go into the ocean. It makes an alluvial fan and then this this uh, color is almost like the river going in. Lots of different ways you'll have to experiment on your own. In this case, I'm going to pull this one off. I'm going to do a flip and drag, so I'm just turning it over here. Now, one thing I like to do, and not everybody does, I like ribbons in mine. Now, this one didn't have any silicone. Those are just the normal bubbles that we get. So next we're going to do this side with the silicone and I'm just going to go straight up to kind of show you what happens when you go straight up on a flip cup. See how it's pulling the... Now one thing I highly recommend is not torching immediately when you have silicone. Otherwise you get big huge cells and they distort as you move the paint off. Wait till halfway through and then torch. And I think you'll be better pleased with the cells and the cells keeping their shape. So in this case, when I tilt, I usually try and tilt the place that I wanna keep first. So I actually really like this section. So I'm gonna to tilt to these three corners first and then I can push all that off if, if that's where I'd, I decide I don't want. But see how the bubble, the bubbles, the cells are coming up now and they're going to slowly get bigger and bigger. But if I had done that earlier, when I, when I tilt, they would really dis, disfigure themselves. So 
So now we're just gonna give these a few minutes and we'll be right back. So I'm gonna get a close up in just a second. I am really loving this one. I'm loving how the, the cells are forming. I'm loving the color combination. Just a really airy, um, kind of natural ocean type vibe. This one, not as much, like at all. So every pour can't be perfect. I make mistakes too. There are some things I really like here, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to do a balloon smash and see if this one can't um, look a little bit better. And with a balloon splash, I'm just taking a balloon that isn't quite all the way pumped up. Um, this one's been sitting for a bit, so it probably doesn't have enough air. But I'm just gonna squeeze it a little bit and put it, put it in, roll it around a little and pull it up and see what we can't get. So wow, that brought a lot of the darker colors to the forefront and I'm liking that one a lot better than what it was before. So now let's get in for a close up. So let's first look at the layered flip cup that I did that I balloon dipped on to hopefully try and save it. One thing I didn't like about it is the colors did not mix enough. So I either needed to go slightly heavier so that they stayed together more, or I needed to go slightly thinner so that they mixed a little bit more. Otherwise you get that kind of half coloring that I really didn't like. But I do think that the balloon dip really brought some character to kind of a bland pour before. And I love that some of this darker orange came out, especially over here. I really love how that one looks. Overall, not my favorite painting, but not bad at all. So on this side, I really love how this one turned out. Just beautiful colors. Got some really nice cells. They didn't get distended too much. Uh, this one we have here is really big there, but I don't think it detracts too much from it. Um, I kind of got that brownish color. I either need to use more of the darker orange that I had or a whole lot less just to keep that from kind of overwhelming everything else. That is probably going to be one that I put up for sale here once it's dry, cured, and I have a top coat on it. So if you're having trouble with your flip cups, uh, most of the advice that I give people is one, make it a little bit thinner than you would. If you use silicone, don't torch until at least halfway through so that your cells don't get huge. and when you finish, look at it, walk away for two minutes, come back, and then from there you can objectively decide if something needs to be done like I did with the balloon pour there. Otherwise, us as artists, we always try to be perfectionist and we work it and work it and work it. And generally for me, that means I ruin it. 